we had had some discussion. And we used to kind of wrap it up with a prayer. And kind of in the middle of it, I just felt like, you know, the Lord just kind of stirred my spirit to the moment. And says, you know, we have something really special here. Amen. Come on. And I continue to think on that this past few days. And, and the Lord just expanded that thought in my spirit. And, and here's what He's saying to the church tonight. We have pastors here in this church who can be pastors somewhere else. But they're not. They're right here. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. We have a praise worship team that can go anywhere and throw this out. But they're here. Amen. You can be somewhere else. But you're here. And that's what makes up the church. We have something special here, church. We need to cherish it and notice the God. And in the middle of all that, it's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. We're doing good. 
good. Those thoughts will come. I'll never forget. This was, this was kind of a, a funny response, but I'll never forget. Years and years ago, probably 30 years ago, I was listening to Billy Graham, and he was interviewing, I don't remember who it was, but they were talking about how we had thought, how we process thought. And the, and, the, and the host asked Billy Graham, says, okay, Billy Graham, you're, you're a man. You have male desires. What do you do when you're driving down the street and you see an absolutely <coughs> gorgeous woman? He, said, he says, I say, God, you did good on that one. You don't look again. <laughs> How do you handle thought? Because thought will come into your mind sometimes that, it, that can defeat you if you don't deal with it. You can't just let it slide. If a bad thought comes in, you've got to deal with it right, nip it in the bud, deal with it right then and cast it out. Because if you think on it, it can get to it. It can begin to influence your speech. It can begin to influence your actions. So it has to be dealt with right there. I thank God so much for the Holy Ghost. Because when I do something I shouldn't do, the Holy Ghost is on my case. And I say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How I many thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost? See, He's on my case. If, I do something, or if there's something I should have done and I didn't do, He's on my case. And I say, Holy Ghost, stay right on my tail because I want you right there in me the all the time. Check me if I miss. Check me if I fail. Amen. In word, Proverbs 18 and 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They who love it shall, get, shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life. Words can kill. When we were little kids in school, we used to sing that song or have that saying, you know, sticks and stones can break my bones and words can never, what? Hurt me. Hurt me. That's a lie. <laughs> words hurt. You may know that. Words hurt. So we have to be careful of our words. We're, 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 we're held accountable for our thoughts and our words. The yeah. Bible says in one place, when, when we go before God to receive our re just reward in heaven, our reward will be based on how we handle these things. Yeah. Amen. In another place, it says, if you don't make it to heaven, you go before the white room judgment. That's the place you don't want to be, by the way. You'll be judged there. For your deeds. For your deeds. <coughs> so, death and life are in the tongue. Power of the tongue. And they who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, if you're speaking death, you're going to experience death. If you're speaking life, you're going to experience life. People around the world need to wake up to the fact Amen. of the power of words. The power of words. What, what, what spirit is it that's spoken? James 3.10 Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and curses. My brother, these things ought not to be. It's a powerful thing for a Christian to say to another person, God bless you. We, we often don't understand the full impact of that. God bless you, brother. You're, you're coming in agreement with heaven, and you're causing the windows of heaven to be open to you. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. These are powerful spoken words that produces good things. But when we talk bad about something, somebody, we're speaking curses. Words kill. I shared with Pastor Tuesday. I said, you know, I remember way back, probably when I was in my late 20s, there was an evangelist who came through our, to our church, our whole revival. And in one of his messages, he said something that just caused a, a hush to come over the audience. It was just like, well, you could hear a pin drop. He, he read that scripture. Power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Cursings and blessings are in the power of the tongue. He said there's a lot of Christians that are murderers. When you 
speak curses, those words kill. When you speak bad things about people, those words kill. So we have to be very careful about what we say. Over in Ecclesiastes, it says, Touch not my anointing, and do them no harm. Now that doesn't just apply to the to the pastors of the church. That doesn't just apply to the praise worship team. That applies to every one of us. Because you can be given a testimony on the streets of Sonora and be able to anoint your Holy Ghost, and that's the person. So we're all counted in it. Touch not my anointing, and do them no harm. Let me hear it today. God means what He says. Yes, right. Because I'm sharing with you before. I could write a book, and it would be a thick book. I could write a book on people that have cursed me, come against me, brought me before the judge. They died early, or they lost everything they had. They're in poverty today, and some of them are homeless. And I, I don't glory in that. I leave that up to God. But God means exactly what He says. Touch not my anointing. I mean, there's, don't speak any bad words about anybody. Amen. Because you'll be held accountable for it. Touch not my anointing and do them no harm. Not as you feel like it or the case, but he says, do them no harm. So we're, if, if we can't speak something good, then we need to keep our mouths shut. Right. Because you're going to eat those words if you don't. Amen. You're going to regret those words if you don't. Now we get to the actions, our deeds. Luke 23, 41. We receive the due reward of our deeds. That's what God says. Luke 23, 41. We receive the due rewards of our deeds. Colossians 3, 17. And, whosoever you, and, and whatsoever you do in the word of deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it as unto Christ. Do it in the name of Jesus. God bless you in the name of Jesus. God heal you in the name of Jesus. Give Him all glory. But you know today, I, I believe the thing that's, that's, that's hurting the church the most today falls in these three areas. <coughs> not dealing with thoughts. Not dealing with words. And not dealing with actions. My goodness, look how many of the so-called mainline denominations have drifted away from the mark. They're ordaining lesbians and gay people. They're condoning abortion. They won't stand for anything. You know what I'm saying? If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. And many of the churches around this country are falling for anything. Just to get the numbers. Just to have the mega church. I don't have anything against mega churches. You can make this with one if he wants. That's his business. See? But they will do anything just to keep the members and the money. And that's a sad fact. It's a sad fact. When you think about this, James 1 and 25. But whoso looks into the but whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. You know, we've heard saying, well, this person, everything they touch just turns to gold. Well, wonder why. If they're doing the right thing. You know what? God is so gracious. Sometimes he'll even bless a sinner. Amen. There's a young man that I grew up with in Oklahoma. His parents went to the same church we did for, for all of our growing up years until we got out of high school. And I probably ate as much of his mama's cooking as I did mine. Because we were buddies. And he had never, I saw him just a few years ago, he never, as far as I know, he has never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. That didn't. In the early 60s, he came to, to, to Redding, California, started a used car dealership, and he was so blessed, at age 47, he sold out and got ready to retire. He was a millionaire already. Well, he got bored and he decided he wanted to get back in business, so he started buying car dealerships. He 
He owns every car dealership in Northern California from Corning to the Oregon border. He's now a multi-billionaire, but he's still insane. So there's proof that God blesses the sin of you. See, he healed his mother was a Christian. She just passed away a couple years ago. He would, he, he would sustain her. See, that was a good thing. God had a purpose. He'd sustain her. But you see, God is such a grateful God. Sometimes when we're way out in left field, He'll still bless us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When we completely miss the mark, we can say, Thank you, Lord. Because He said, These things tonight, these things tonight, the reason I have this consequence is because everything we think and everything we speak and everything we do has a consequence. Good or bad. And we need to be keenly aware of that every 24 seconds. I want to share with you just a moment. I want to give you seven fundamentals of Christianity. Now these I've kept, I think I've got these from you. Hi, I get right here. If you don't mind, Bill, a few weeks ago, this came back to my spirit. Got out of the first one up there. Okay. Seven fundamentals of Christianity. Now, what I want you to get from this, look at this. Believe in one and only triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There's a lot of people trying to get to heaven, but they can't accept that right there. I remember a few years ago when, when Larry King Lyon was still on. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he had one of the leading ministers. It may have been John Hank. I don't remember exactly who it was. One of the leading ministers, pastors from uh, his guest. And this pastor turned to Larry and asked him, he says, if you had a chance to ask God something, what would you ask him? And Larry King said, he said, he said, I would say, God, did you really have a son? That's where a lot of the world is. They can't, they can't get past this right here. And, and Jesus says very clearly, there's no way to the Father except through me. I mean, there's hundreds of proofs in the Word that Jesus is the Son of God. And He lives today. Hallelujah. He lives today. But this is the first, first we must believe and know there is a triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. No other gods. The, the God we serve is the only true and living God. The rest of them are dead and being forgotten about. The Lord is true. A lot of people have trouble with that out there. We say we have one God, but they can't understand the triunity of that God. If they can't believe that, they have no chance. Because it's all the way heaven. Second one, please. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God and His finished work on the cross, dead and built resurrection, is what made all the difference for you and I. Had He not gone there, we would still be carrying the sin burden. Had He not gone there, we would still have to be doing the sacrifices. Amen. Had He not gone there, we would have no hope. But the world cannot accept that. He is the Son of God. The world cannot accept the fact that He is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to heaven. Amen. Believe that Jesus, or I can change the word, knowing that Jesus is the Son of God. Knowing that He is the Son of God. And the finished work He did on the cross is what makes it happen. That's what changed the world. That's what changed the package that God offered to mankind. I'm thankful for that. How about you? Amen. Number three. Jesus' blood alone for redemption and old sin. You can't get it by how much you give. You can't get it by the works you do. You can't get it because somebody's anointed your head. You can't get it because somebody's ordained you. You can't get it any other way except through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus' blood alone for the redemption of all sin. See, that covers past sin, present sin, and future sin. As long as we stay right with God. When we 
we fall short and we sin, all we have to do is speak to the advocate, Jesus Christ. Amen. He said that to right hand of the Father, Jesus, I'm sorry. Forgive me. It's done. It's done. Because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. Number four. True repentance and confession of Jesus is Lord. Salvation in the Lord. People really get saved. I have people come to me and I ask them, are you a Christian? Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. You go to church? Well, Christmas, Easter. Have you really been saved? Well, I think so. I don't know about you, but I want to know. I want to be for sure, for sure. I'm saved. Amen. I want to be, I want to know that I'm saved. True repentance, not just, not just an exercise. Sometimes I get worried about some of, some of the things I see on TV for hundreds of people will come and they'll stand and say the Lord's Prayer. How many of those really got saved? How many really, really got saved? Or were they just, they just get emotional and went up there and did it? See, how many truly got saved? True repentance and true confession, being sorry for our sins. So that the blood of Jesus can cover our lives and wash our sins away. I love to say, Jesus, just wash me today in your red blood and make me as white as the driven snow. Hallelujah. Number five. The Holy Bible is inspired word of God and none other. Amen. There are religions out there writing their own ticket every day. There are hundreds of religions around this world that won't accept anything I'm putting up here tonight. But all you can call them is religions. Occultish in many cases. The Holy Bible is the inspired word. The Bible says He breathed every word of it. Amen. You know, I, I look at I look at some of the major players in the Bible that, that we talk about Paul and all the books that he was blessed to record. Because he didn't write them. God wrote them. God just told him, write this down, son. See? The Holy Bible is the inspired Word of God and none other. None other. There's a lady. She just put out a CD, I want to give she's, she's, uh, She was high up in the government in Iraq. <coughs> she knows the ins and outs of, of Islam. And I've heard her on TV two or three times. And her name is Bridget Gabrielle. And, and she's in America going around the churches sharing what God has. She's a Christian. And sharing what God has done for her personally and sharing how, how God has given her the insight and the knowledge of Islam. How many here tonight, when, when was the first time you heard the word Islam? I can remember back in the late 50s when a lot of the NBA players, NFL players, boxers, and other sports figures would get big contracts and become extremely wealthy and they will be recruited by the Muslims of Islam. Cassius Clay, Mohammed Ali, Lou Elson, a number of you know where they are. Okay, let me, let me give you some insight. There is a word that only shows up four times in Scripture. The Greek word, and I, I'd have to go ahead and tell you where it is, but you can look it up for yourself. There's a Greek word that only occurs four times in Scripture. Three of the times, He's talking about green grass and green corn and green. When you read in Revelations, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, we can understand that human minded people, the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, we can't understand the pale horse. It should have been translated green horse because green is the color of Islam. Confirming the fact that what the Bible says, the kingdom of Islam will be the last kingdom to reign on this earth before Jesus comes to save his kingdom. Think about that. Why, why, is, why has Islam been so, 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 so obscure? Because of that translation right there. It's, it's just been happening behind the scenes for decades now. All of a sudden, it's all more. All of a sudden, it's powerful. All of a sudden, it's doing all these things. But you see, yes, pale horse means death, but so is Islam. It should have been interpreted the green horse. If you go on your computer and you pull up their temple on a temple mount, you will see that all the tree is green, the fences are green, green is the prevalent not the color of that temple mount. Because it's the color of Islam. 
Why am I saying that? We need to be aware of what's going on. And we can only be aware if we're, if we're in God this way. If we're in His Word. If we are in His Word. It's the only truth that exists on this earth. The Holy Bible. The Holy Bible. And, and you know, I was thinking the other day, if, if someone's driving down the freeway and they see a billboard saying, Jesus saves, most of the world will say, well, who's Jesus? What, what do you mean saved? See, now, but, but when somebody's coming to a church and heard the gospel preached out of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, then they're held accountable. We, we, don't, we, we don't have all excuses have been wiped away. Once we've heard for them, we're down. We have some choices to make. We have some decisions to make. The, the way we think needs to change. The way we speak needs to change. The way we act needs to change. Amen? Amen. 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 Number six. Living a call out life, not just fighting from the world. In other words, the Bible calls us to come out from among the world and be yourself. Unspotted by the world. You see, the, the, the unspotted people make up the unspotted church that he's coming back for. The unspotted people make up the glorious church he's coming back for. The unspotted people make up the, the victorious church, the powerful church that he's coming back for. That's why it's so important. Living a call out unspotted from the world influences, unspotted from the world system, unspotted from anything in this world. That's what we're looking at. The last one is fulfill the great commission following the call in our lives. Now, when you look at those seven, look at them for You see, if a person doesn't fulfill number seven, fulfill the great commission, Follow the call of life. I'm not going to tell you that if you don't do that, it'll keep you out of heaven. But it sure enough, affects your reward. Got to agree with But one through six, we better follow. One through six is the road to heaven. One through six is the only way to heaven. One through six is the only way to live a victorious life in this life. These are the, the fundamentals of Christianity. If you, there, there are many denominations that you go to and say, well, they, they announce themselves as being Christian. But they're going to be suddenly disappointed because they're far from it. They're not willing to accept what I've shared with you here tonight. These are, these are, the, these are the, the essence of Christianity, the fundamentals of Christianity. This is what it takes to live a Christian life and be worthy of what God has in store for us. Without that, we won't make it. But churches, calling themselves Christians, and, and look at the things they're doing. Look at the thing the church is doing. And call themselves Christians. It's an abomination. Some of the things that goes on under the title of the church. Because they won't accept the fundamentals of Christianity. And in order to do that, in order to, in order to fulfill these seven fundamentals, we have to have our thought completely under subjection. We have to have our tongue bridled and completely under subjection. We have to have our actions under control, completely under subjection to the Holy Ghost that came along. Because we can't do it by ourselves. We can't do it by ourselves. So tonight I want to challenge you in these areas. Be very, be extremely careful of how you think about other people. Be extremely careful of the words you speak. Be extremely careful of the actions you take. Of the non-actions. See, somebody said this the other day, if you hit a was, but they, they come in contact with someone, they, they miss an opportunity to witness, and the Holy Spirit just give a good spanking. See, be totally aware, totally aware, Jesus has to be the center of our life, as we're saying in the song. The, 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 
The cross should be the object of our faith. We need to understand that it's all about the cross. It's all about the cross. It's all about the cross. And what Jesus did for us. We must have our eyes on what Jesus being unshakable in our faith. Because as these last hours wind down, the enemy is trying everything he can. As long as we study into that spirit filled liberty we're about to be taught by Pastor Jay, as long as we stay in the will of God, as long as we stay committed to these fundamentals of Christianity, we're going to make it. Doesn't mean we're not, not going to have struggles. It doesn't mean we're not, not going to have a tough time. It doesn't mean things are going to happen. Things happen. But God, come on somebody, but God is bigger. But yeah. God is able to get us through. But God is able to get us through. Amen. He is our great provider. Yes, he he knows where every, before we even realize the need we have, He's already dealing with it. Amen. Come on somebody, but before, before we realize the situation's coming, He's already dealing with it. I appreciate the fact that everything that goes on in our lives has already been discussed in heaven and a decision's been rendered. Here comes the Holy Ghost. The right message I was reminded. Remember Jacob's ladder, the vision? Yeah. He saw a ladder going from earth to heaven. He saw angels ascending and descending. Well, what were they doing? They were taking your request up and bringing back the answer. Hallelujah. I'm glad that the angels are working on your behalf and they're working on my behalf. When we think the right things, we speak the right things, and we do the right things, there's a host of angels working on your behalf. There's an angel signed to this church. The Bible says there's an angel signed to this church. There's an angel signed to these pastors. I'm not talking about just the guardian angels. Angels, ministering angels. Holy Ghost angels. They'll show us and speak to us. Correct us when we need it. They're working on your behalf. But we have to know this one thing. We have to abide by these seven fundamentals of Christianity. We have to be extremely careful what we think, say, and do. Because that's the first measure. In the name of Jesus. And we can do it because God is on our side. We can do it because we have the blood of Jesus to wash away our sins. We can do it because of what Jesus did on the cross. We're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You sang that old song, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. There's churches today, if you went in and and say anything about the blood of Jesus, they would show you the door. If, they, if you say anything about the gifts of the Spirit, they would show you the door. Well, I'm going to show the devil the door tonight. Because he has no presence in this place. He has no presence in my house. He has no presence in my life. He is a liar and the father of all lies. And he's up to no good. So we have to be on God. I've shared with you before. I, I often, often, not every single day, but often, my, my spirit has just moved. And I walk around that property. And I look at every corner. And I said, I looked at that angel and I say, Sentry, you're on me. Sentry, you're on me. And you're guarding what God has given us. You're on me. So I don't have to worry. Things are happening right here in our community. There's weapons going on. There's murders going on. There's demons going on. There's drugs going on. It's happening right here. And we were talking to our pastors. You see, that if you remember, I was stationed in Southern California during the watch riots. I saw all that happen. And, and uh, the gangs there were getting so bad, they organized a multi agency law enforcement task force. And they began to get into the gangs big time. Me and moved to Sacramento. Amen. Two years ago, they did the same thing in Sacramento. Now they're starting to leave Sacramento and come into Stockton and Modesto. They are there now. They're coming into some of the valley towns already, Oak Hill, Valley Springs. We have, to, we have, as a church of God, as a church of Jesus Christ, having the power of the Holy Ghost, we need to set up a standard against Tuolumne County. Amen. And say they're not coming in my neighborhood. Amen. Yes. Because you know what? In the midst of a, a multi agency law enforcement coalition, the Holy Ghost is speaking. Amen. Yes. They can be driving up 108. And run off the road. They can be driving up on the way to hit an invisible wall. God, however God wants to stop him, get here, he can stop. Him. Just so we know. These things are already. So again, the message of the hour to the church, Jesus Christ. Let's get ready. Amen. Stay ready.
I tell you what, I, I, I feel a, a message begin to chill in my spirit. No time, Holy Ghost. Holy this message. Because we need to get back to some holiness. Yeah. We need to get back to some holiness. How we think, how we dress, how we walk, how we speak, how we do all things. Holiness. The Bible says, without it, no man will ever see God. No man will ever laugh. Let us Praise the Lord. Your message will be pretty quick. What, what does it really mean to be holy? Well, you start when you say something. How do you handle thought? How do you handle your speech? How do you handle your actions? No, these are the foundational, fundamental things of Christianity. Let's stay on the side of God. Let's stay in Christianity. Let's, let's stay worthy of the title when someone calls us a Christian. I remember being taught under Papa Hayden, and, and, and we'd, be, we'd be in these American discussions sometimes with the whole student body there. Questions would come and he answer them. He said, well, wait, 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 let's stay on God's side. Because the discussion is starting to get you off the word, get off into your flesh and things. He said, wait a minute, let's stay on God's side. Amen. And of course, he said, I'm just going to live like I believe the Bible is true. I'm just going to live like I believe the Bible is true. How about you? Stand. Hallelujah. And everything, you know, you've heard me say before that everything God created, He put His balance and His order in it. And could you not? That there used to be a saying back in the 60s that says, Don't mess with Mother Nature. Because of the consequences of the good. And it's true fact. God created nature to, to, to act like He wanted to act. But when it gets out of whack, it's a consequence, a negative consequence. The same thing goes true in our life. When we get out of whack, when we, when we lose connection with the Holy Spirit, just for a moment sometimes, it's all it takes. It only takes a moment. It only takes a moment to get that one word and we shouldn't speak. It only takes a moment to get that one action and we shouldn't speak. So I want to leave you in this talk tonight. Everything we think, speak, and do has a consequence. Let's make a moment. Amen. God bless you.